We work very closely with the United States Geological Survey, the USGS, and we think their uh, methodology for assessing world resources is, is a reasonable one, and we rely on that for our modeling. Channel 4 News has been told by a top Saudi oil industry insider that the American government's forecast for future oil supplies is a dangerous overestimate. Join a rare interview, the man that's just retired as head of exploration at Aramco, that's the stout Saudi state oil giant, he's told us that the estimates from the U.S. government energy think tank, that's the EIA, they're simply too high. Here he is. They're not only overestimating the Middle East, but they overestimate non-OPEC. They overestimate Russia. They overestimate the whole global resource base. And I think this is a rather uh, dangerous situation for the U.S. government policy to be based on. I've been teasing the U.S. Geological Survey. They also had a very high estimate for the United States. And I says, where is the rest of that stuff? He says, is it under South Alabama? Just whisper in my ear. We'll all get fabulously rich. <laughs> An email has leaked out from the director of the U.S. Geological Survey to the teams making the estimates saying, it's important that we have big estimates because that'll encourage people to go out and find more oil. There's very little time to do anything, and we haven't been doing anything, and we're not now doing anything, and our political leaders either don't know or don't care that there's a problem. Back in the late 1980s, OPEC made a rule change which said that member countries could extract and export oil proportionally to their stated reserves. Now this instantly provided an incentive to member countries to overstate their reserves because they wanted to extract and export as much oil as they could in order to earn foreign exchange income. So within a couple of years of this rule change, every OPEC country stated reserve increases of between 50 and 200 percent, even when there were no important new uh, discoveries being made. Saudi Arabia in one year went from having something like uh, 140 billion barrels of reported reserves to something like 250 billion barrels. We could go down the list. Every OPEC country did essentially the same thing. Now, a lot of people assume when they read in the New York Times or, or Newsweek magazine or someplace that Saudi Arabia has 256 billion barrels of, of proven reserves, that this is a figure that's somehow monitored by some independent uh, international agency. Maybe there's a, a global oil cop with a big dipstick that goes around and checks once a year just to see you know, how much is in the tank. That's far from being the case uh, for uh, countries like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Uh, uh, true national oil reserves are a state secret. All we have to go on is their word for it. And the evidence is that in fact these countries actually have much less oil than they're reporting. We are moving from cheap, abundant oil to expensive, scarce oil. And we absolutely are, with technology, without technology. Where the peak is, where the peak is not. And that change is a major change in the industrial history of the world. And that change is going to be huge. Frankly, I think the, the greatest danger arising from peak oil is the likelihood of uh, resource wars.
is there possibility of conflict absolutely is it possible that in an oil exporting region the united states would end up aiding one force and the chinese another because there's oil there absolutely an absolute possibility in the future I think the danger is not only between large powers that are consumers of oil. I think the danger is that there will be more invasions to secure oil. There will be more threats against oil exporters that if they don't behave in a certain way, they may face a military action. And I also think that there is an increasing huge danger of civil conflict and civil war inside oil exporters themselves. The biggest worry is that the whole world economy will go into a nosedive. And that's a very serious proposition. As the increase in petroleum supplies comes to an end and we have a stagnant production curve and demand is rising, the world economy will have very little flexibility in it to respond to crises. It's very difficult to overemphasize how fragile the supply-demand balance is. Any relatively small interruption in supplies, whether it be politically motivated or industrial accidents, can lead to large spikes in oil prices. I think a, a prolonged global recession with high prices and a lot of insecurity is going to lead to political instability as well as economic instability. Regimes will fall, uh, crises will erupt, and how that will play itself out, nobody can be sure, but I'm certain that it will be a, a very scary, tense period. As uh, oil becomes more valuable and scarce, I think it's overwhelmingly likely that the oil companies will look for it absolutely anywhere that it can possibly be found. Offshore from California and Florida in Alaska and the National Wildlife Refuge. In South America, I don't think any place is really off limits, ultimately. It means eating up pristine areas, it means uh, killing environments, it means moving indigenous peoples, it means destroying the air, it means destroying the water in an earth that is increasingly smaller and smaller and not able to handle this.